he almost single-handedly brought bluegrass music up to the level that it is today. At one point, he had two 67s that were one serial number apart. One looked like it had been in a fire, and the other one had been somewhere in some broadcasting studio that was pristine. I think you guys have the pristine one. We always stereo mic'd me, and we used the KM84 on the low end, even though you would use that as a microphone that you wanted to ping from, and a 67. And the 67 would be at about, like if I'm looking down at the Dobro cover plate, the 67 would be like right even with the strap that goes across the middle of the cover plate, like we'll call it noon, the KM84 would be coming out in and at an angle pointed toward the screen of the Dobro where the round hole is in the top of the Dobro to capture all that bass. But going into that kind of really bright KM84 did something to that KM84 sound, and the KM84 loved it. You know, he loved the low end, and it, it captured all the low mid that I wanted in my sound. I didn't want a pingy sound. I wanted a nice, even sound where I could can romp on the thing, too, you know, and get a different personality characteristic from it. But he knew what microphones I liked to use. The KM84, and especially that 67, was just a magic microphone for me. He knew the secret about the meeting in the air of all these notes. That's where the sound is. That's where the essence of everything is. It's not down here, it's what happens up here. And all of this stuff going together is what made all of our favorite records sound so good.